all right this is the third video um, let's talk about some identities some of them are standard which are consequence of definition meaning cosecant is the reciprocal of sine secant is the reciprocal of cosine cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent tangent is the ratio of sine and cosine and cotangent is the ratio of cosine and sine now one way to remember this is um, the tangent cotangent relation is simple right because they have the word tangent in them but the other one is sort of the reciprocal of c is an s so cosecant is sine and s which is secant is the cosine one so always remember that sine cosine tangent sort of are in one bucket and then their reciprocals are in another bucket so if you're trying to find like say what's the reciprocal of cosine then because it's a c it's going to go to s so it's secant or if you're trying to find remember what is cosecant then because it's a c and it's in this bucket it's going to be one over sine some of these identities these are pythagorean or circular identities the circular you recall we we reach this by using equation of a circle but we can also use this or get here using pythagoras theorem let's say i have a right angle triangle this is x this is y and this is h and this is theta by our definition sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse and cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse so sine squared plus cosine squared is y over h squared plus x over h squared which is y squared over h squared plus x squared over h squared which take the lcm is h squared and this is x squared plus y squared but it's a right triangle so by pythagoras theorem what is x squared plus y squared it's exactly h squared so this is h squared over h squared which is 1 so that gives you that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is always 1 so that's another way of proving it you should know both ways of proving it one using the circle and one using the triangle now going from here to here is um, it, it's kind of e easier um, so what you can do is you can verify this 1 plus tan squared theta right which is tangent is the ratio of sine and cosine now that means the LCM is cosine squared so you get cosine squared plus sine squared but you already found out that this is just 1 so this is 1 over cosine squared which means it's secant squared <clears throat> so essentially you just have to remember one identity and the two of them follow you can try to show this one um, on your own using the fact that cotangent is cosine over sine so cotangent squared would be cosine squared over sine squared <clears throat> now based on these identities you can have problems like these um, now here we're going to combine two information remember how we talked about quadrants and what is positive and what's negative in each quadrant so that's going to be important here express sine theta in terms of cosine theta for each quadrant <clears throat> now first of all what do we know about sine and cosine we know that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1 so solving for sine squared theta sine squared theta is 1 minus cosine squared theta now we know how to solve equations with squares we take square root if you take square root you end up with sine theta 1 minus cosine squared theta but the square root can take positive or negative value right so here is where the quadrant thing comes into play 
quadrant 1, 2, 3, 4, the rule was quadrant 1 all positive, quadrant 2 sine positive, tan positive, cosine positive. So this means that in quadrant 1 and 4, oh sorry we're looking at sine, in quadrant, um, so quadrant 1 and quadrant 2 sine is positive, so we take the positive square root. But in quadrant 3 and quadrant 4, sine is negative. So we take the negative square root. Okay, so in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2, sine theta equals square root of 1 minus cosine squared theta. In quadrant 3 and quadrant 4, sine theta equals negative of square root of 1 minus cosine squared theta. Next one, express tan theta in terms of sine theta where theta is in quadrant 2. Now we already know that tan theta is the ratio of sine theta over cosine theta. Now we need or we want it to be all in terms of sine theta. So I need to rewrite this cosine thing in terms of sine. Now recall cosine squared theta is 1 minus sine squared theta. So cosine theta is the square root of 1 minus sine squared theta plus minus. But which of these am I going to take? Quadrant 2, only sine is positive. So in quadrant 2, cosine is negative, which means I'm going to take the negative square root. So tan theta is going to be sine theta divided by negative square root of 1 minus sine squared theta. If it was say quadrant 1, this would have been positive. If it was quadrant 4, it would have been positive because cosine is positive in those quadrants. If tan theta equals 2 thirds and theta is in quadrant 3, find cosine theta. Now this is going to be the reverse of the triangle situation. Meaning, if you are given a trig ratio, you make a right triangle and you recall that tangent is opposite over adjacent. So you assign these values. The opposite is 2, the adjacent is 3. So the hypotenuse is square root of 9 plus 4 square root of 13. Then by definition cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse which is 3 over root 13 but quadrant 3. So you need to check Quadrant 3 is A, S, T, C. So tangent positive, which means cosine is negative. So your final answer, you need to add a negative here before you report the values. Now last example here. Secant theta is given to be 2. Now we, if you are in the second group of ratios yeah remember how these are one group these are one group if you are in this ratio this this place here you want to go over to the first group because those are easier to work with now secant is s so secant is actually reciprocal of cosine so if secant is 2 then cosine theta is the reciprocal of 2 which means it's one half thereafter you just make the triangle this is going to be square root of 3 So sine theta is going to be root 3 over 2, tan theta is going to be root 3 over 1, cosecant theta is reciprocal of sine 2 over root 3, secant theta is already 2, um, cosine is already 1 half and cotangent is reciprocal of tangent 1 over root 3. Those are the values, but you're not yet done because you're in quadrant 4. Yeah? Quadrant 4 is ASTC, so cosine is positive, so this is fine, which means the reciprocal of cosine is also positive, but everything else is negative. So you have to add negative to all of these. Now, because you're in quadrant 4, 
a sine tangent, cosecant, cotangent values are negative, but the cosine and secant values are positive. Now, as a conclusion to this section, um, the point is that there is a relation, or we can take this leap from trigonometric ratios to trigonometric functions, and we write them as y equals sine x. And the input, that is x, is going to be angle, and it returns a real number as output. And what is this real number? It's the ratio of the, in this case, opposite to hypotenuse in a right triangle that has an angle equal to input. So for example, if I say y equals sine x, and let's say x equals 32 degrees, I plug into the calculator. Um, make sure it's in degrees so I plug in sine of 32 and I round it off so this is 0 0.53 now this is as a function but what, what this is really saying is that if I take this triangle if I take any right triangle and I make this angle equal to 32 degrees and I measure opposite and I measure hypotenuse then in this triangle the ratio of these two is going to be exactly 0 0.53 or in other words if I think of this as say 0 0.53 over 1 right one such triangle would have this length 0 0.53 would have this one now let's verify. Let's try to solve for this x. Uh, let's call this L here. L is going to be 1 minus 0 0.53 squared in the square root using Pythagoras. Square root of gosh. comes out to roughly 0 0.85 so let's verify which means that if this is correct then using this triangle cosine 32 should be 0 0.85 roughly let's verify cosine of 32 is 0 0.848 which is true so I can verify here if I instead looked at this function and I let x be 32 degrees, then y is in fact approximately 0.85. Similarly, based on the definition of this triangle, tangent should be 0 0.53 over 0 0.85, roughly 0 0.62, which means if I take the function y equals tan x and I plug in 32 degrees, I should get that value let's check I do get roughly 0 0.62 so what we established here is that by starting from a triangle we are able to define these six functions now which are on real numbers what do these functions do they take an angle as input and they return a real number as an output and that real number corresponds to a right angle triangle which has one of its angles as the input and it tells us everything about the triangle and remember from our activity this triangle there are infinitely many triangles with the same angle 32 degrees and they all have the same ratio so this makes it a really powerful tool this is where we're gonna stop for day two videos